this will be a shocker. Carboxylic acids are acidic, right? Duh. They are weak acids. Do you remember what a weak acid is versus a strong acid? It has nothing to do with how caustic it is, you know, how, how dangerous it is or anything. It has to do with does it dissociate completely or partially when you put it in water? A strong acid, like a strong electrolyte, dissociates completely. There were seven strong acids. Um, hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid are two very common ones. When you put hydrochloric acid in water, the hydrogen and the chloride ions separate completely and you have no intact molecules. With a weak acid, you mostly have intact molecules and only a few hydrogen ions. So when we dissolve a carboxylic acid in water, this is an acidic hydrogen. That's what makes it an acid. And that hydrogen can jump ship and go hang out on a water molecule forming the hydronium ion. So we've got the transfer of a hydrogen ion. A hydrogen ion is simply a proton because a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. If you remove the one electron to make an H plus ion, what do you have left? Just the proton. So I tell my general chem students, you know, H plus being a proton, I mean, that's just this crazy, it's just a nucleus, basically, with one proton, the smallest thing you can get. It's too small to be out by itself. It does not go just swimming around on its own. That's like a three-month-old baby roaming Disneyland. Not going to happen, right? It's got to be held by someone. And so that proton can be on the carboxylic acid or it can go over to the water molecule. When the water molecule is holding it, it becomes a hydronium ion. And so this reaction does proceed in this direction and it forms, we form hydronium ions. And then what we have left of this carboxylic acid is called a carboxylate ion. We've lost a hydrogen ion, so now we've got a negative ion there. But this is a weak acid, and so the extent of that proton transfer is usually less than 5%. It just goes in this direction a little bit, but mostly, more than 95% of the molecules are going to be the intact molecules, and only 5% or less are going to be ionized. So that's important to remember. The ion that's formed is called a carboxylate ion. That's the negative ion produced when you remove an acidic hydrogen from a carboxylic acid. If you have a dicarboxylic acid, you have the potential for removing two hydrogen ions. Naming the carboxylate ions, we just tweak their name a little bit. So here, this is acetic acid. And when we take off this hydrogen ion, it becomes acetate. So we take off the ic acid and we replace it with eight. And so this is very similar to the pattern we learned in general chemistry. Or if you have nitric acid, that comes from the nitrate ion. So acetic acid comes from the acetate ion, something like oxalic acid, which is a dicarboxylic acid, can lose two hydrogen ions, and then the name is oxalate oxalate ion. That's, those are the common names. The IUPAC names, this is one, two carbons, ethane, ethanoic acid. So we drop the ic acid and we change it to ethanoate. And this is one, two carbons also. This is ethane dioic acid because it's a double. So this becomes ethane dioate. And yes, some of these names get kind of funny sounding. But it, it's just prefixes and suffixes all just strung together. Any questions? That's a new section, isn't it? Yeah.